Hey, welcome to another episode of Fridays with Zell. Today we are going to talk about Git Remote. What is a Git Remote and how do you push onto a Git Remote? So first of all, what is a Git Remote? Now, um, whenever you save something onto a Git repository, right now what we have done is saving the Git repository on our computer. In Git terminology, we call that a local repository, right? Uh, a Git Remote is the same repository, but stored somewhere else on the cloud, uh, on a, another person's server. So if your computer crashes, you can always get the latest version from the Git Remote to replace your local computer. So that way it creates a backup for you. Now, to talk about Git Remotes, we, uh, we have to talk about the different services that provide a remote. So examples of such services include GitHub, um, Bitbucket, and GitLab. There are no differences between these three um, services except uh, for, the, for their pop popularity and for their web interface. Most people like to use GitHub because GitHub is popular and most open source projects are stored on GitHub. Some open source projects can also be stored on Bitbucket and GitLab as well and that is if you want them. Now, if you want to uh, create a private repository, that means your repository can only be read by you and people you give permission to, and no one in the public can just go in and see your files. You might want to consider uh, Git, uh, GitLab or Bitbucket first, because those two allow you to create private repositories for free. But on GitHub, you have to pay $7 a month to create a private repository. Now, with that aside, for this video, I'm only going to show you how to set up a remote with GitHub. Because um, you, the, the rest follow the same instructions, so you can have a look at it on your own free time. If you want to create a remote on GitHub, you need to create a repository on GitHub first. So go to github.com and sign in. Create an account if you don't have one already. Once you have signed in, you'll come to a page where you can see a plus button at the top right hand corner of the page. Click on the plus button and you will be able to select new repository. Once you click on new repository, you need to give your repository a name. In this case, we're going to call it project. You can leave the description out um, for now. And the description is for you to describe your project in a line or two. So you and other people can easily understand what this project is about. Set the project to public so anyone can see the project. If, like I mentioned earlier, if you want a private repository, you can create a private private repository as well, but that will cost money on GitHub. Now, ignore the rest of the things and, cl and click Create Repository. After you click rep Create Repository, you'll come to this page where there is a quick setup with some lines of code that teaches you how to set up a remote with your local repository. We are going to ignore all of this um, information over here because this requires you to use the command line. Now, further down the road, when you come back to this page a few lessons later, you will understand how to do all of this. So don't worry about that right now. What we want to do is to first link up our repository in fork our local repository in fork to the remote repository that we have just created. So the first thing you want to do is to copy the URL that is shown in this bar over here. Now make sure you select um, HSSH. The difference between HTTPS and SSH is that SSH allows you to push uh, that means put things onto the remote or pull, that means copy the remote back to your local repository. So SSH allows you to push or pull without entering your GitHub account and your GitHub password again. So it makes things 
a lot easier. So copy this value and what we need to do next is to open up the project and fork. Once you open up the project and fork, um, you can click on the push button. The push button is the fourth button from the left but at the top and it kind of looks like an arrow that goes upwards. So once you click on the push button, um, Fork will ask you to select a branch to push to and select a remote to push to. In this case, our branch will be master because we only have one branch. And the remote, we don't have a remote yet. So we need to add a remote. So click on the select box and select add remote. You need to name your remote and for most repositories, the default name will be origin. You can have multiple remotes and in those cases, you can name your remotes according to where they are from, like say GitHub or Heroku or Bitbucket, for example. Then the repository URL should be the URL that you just copied. Fork should have auto-filled that URL for you, but if it doesn't, then you just have to paste it in. Then select Add New Remote. With that, the remote will be added, and the next thing you want to do is to push your files onto the remote itself. When you do so, make sure you select Create Tracking Reference, so make sure that is checked. A tracking reference uh, tells git or or rather it tells fork in this case to track the current branch which is master and ask it to push or pull to the same branch on the remote so we want to create a tracking reference otherwise we have to specify the branch every single time we push the remote if branching sounds a little bit foreign to you right now don't worry about it we will talk about branching in a later video. For now, just remember that you need to track the branch that you are uh, pushing or pulling. So that means you need to make sure the create tracking reference is checked. Once that is checked, you can click push and fork will push your project onto GitHub. Once it is pushed, you can look at all commits or in other git clients there will be git history if you look at git commits you can see two different tags one is called master which is the current branch on our computer and one is called origin slash master which is the master branch on the remote named origin so in this case the origin is on github so that means the files that are that we have on our local is the same as the files we have on github to verify this we can go back into the same page that you had earlier after cl clicking on create repository if you refresh the page you will come to what you usually see on github which is a project page there's a project you can see the files that are in the project and if you look at one of the files, for example, index.html, you can see that the files in there are exactly the same as the files you have on your computer. Now, that is how you push a file onto a Git remote for the first time. Subsequent pushes are much easier. So let's say we want to make a change to our repository and this time we want to create a readme file. A readme file is a file that shows up on GitHub in this place. It helps people understand what your project is about. So you want to create a readme file for every single repository that you create. Uh, in this case, I've created a readme.md file. That is the format that you will need to create. And you can write a few words in the file. So let's say um, what we're going to say is hello world. This is my first GitHub repo. And then hit save. Once you hit save, you will be able to see the changes in fork. 
if you click on the changes tab. Now, as before, what we want to do is to stage the file and then commit the file. So in this case, um, since we're adding a readme file, the commit message can be something like create readme. Then click on commit one file. Once you have created a new commit, if you take a look at the left hand side in the sidebar for fork at the master branch, you will see a number one and an arrow that points upwards. This tells us that our master branch is one commit ahead of the remote branch. That means our master branch is more updated compared to the remote branch. And if you look at the Git history, you can see that on the local master branch, there is a create readme commit, but this create readme commit did not make it to the remote branch yet. If you want to push the remote branch, uh, sorry, if you want to push this new commit onto the remote branch, we need to click on the push button, select push, and that is all we need to do. Fork will push the commit onto the GitHub repo, and once it is pushed, you can see that the origin slash master tag gets moved up to the same level as the master tag. Now, to prove that this is all working, you can go back into the GitHub repository, refresh, and you can see the readme.md file right in the repository itself. This shows that the um, GitHub repository is also updated. Uh, that's all we will cover today. To recap everything that we have mentioned so far, a Git remote is kind of like a backup that is stored on someone else's computer. To create a Git remote, you can use one of the popular services like GitHub, Bitbucket, or GitLab. Create an account, create a repository, and you can link the remote, uh, link your local project to the remote repository that you have created. And once you have linked it up, you can push, which means to put the files onto the remote repository. Now in the next video, we are going to talk about what is a fetch and how do you pull something from the remote back into your own repository. I'll see you in the next video.